My favorite memories of libraries is when we first moved to America. My, I was a 13-year-old immigrant from the Philippines, and my dad took me to the public library for the first time. And we don't have public libraries in the Philippines, or if we do, there's almost very little books in them because, as my dad said, everything gets stolen. And so he was just so moved by the bounty in the library. He could not believe that Americans would let you borrow them and that we could have books for free. And it was um, just amazing to see how moved he was. And, and, then, and it really was this huge valuable thing that he had given us, that he had moved us from a country you know, with no public libraries, uh, or at least not well stocked, um, to a place where there was all these wonderful public libraries. And so we went to the library every week and we could uh, you know, borrow as many books as we wanted. And it's a tradition that I've kept with uh, my daughter. I think it was because you could borrow as many as you wanted. I was a big, voracious reader, and I was always the kid with the stack of 12 books, you know, and to know that I could read whatever I wanted, you know, without having a financial, uh, you know, kind of cap on it. Because uh, we were immigrants, so money was tight, and to know that, you know, you could just get all these books it was just wonderful and that's all I did I all I did was read and all I did was read books from the library we love our uh, our local library uh, in Studio City and also in Palm Springs and those are two of the libraries that we frequent uh, we do work there my friends and I work at the Pasadena library one of my friends lives in Pasadena so we uh, work at the main branch of the Pasadena library and then uh, I take my kid to the Studio City Library every Friday and borrow books. And I've done a bunch of little library events. I've uh, visited the Sherman Oaks Library, um, a library in Van Nuys. So, you know, I go as an author and I also go just as, you know, a mom. I think it's, it's just terrible. I mean, you, you know, to, you, you need to keep the libraries open. You need to keep the libraries staffed. And I think the budget cuts are really going to cut into the heart of you know our democracy of our way of life and you know libraries are a way for people to get an, ed an education and and I think it's it's really terrible that you know they're closing or they have shorter hours or not as much money to buy the books that the kids need to read <laughs> well, uh, you know, I came from a country that did ban books and, you know, not just books, but TV shows, movies. I mean, censorship was just a way of life. You know, if um, President Marcos didn't like it or thought that it would instigate, you know, the populace to rebel, you know, let's not give anybody ideas, you know. Um, so I, I'm definitely against banning books. I'm against um, censorship. Uh, I think one year my friend Ellen Hopkins was invited and then disinvited to a library festival uh, in Texas. And and as a kind of a group, all of the other authors decided, you know, well, we can't stand for that. And uh, my books are very different from Ellen's. We're different kinds of writers. We write about different things. But I think as writers, we should all unite against, you know, that kind of um, that kind of thinking. Um, the latest one that is coming out soon is, uh, well, right now, Serpent's Kiss is out, which is the Witches of Each Sun sequel. And then the finale of Blue Bloods, called Gates of Paradise, is coming out in January. And we also have the Blue Bloods graphic novel. And, um, and the spin-off, called Wolf Pact, which is an original ebook, is coming out in November. And then a new series <laughs> that I, I wrote with my husband for Penguin, called Frozen, The Otherland Chronicles, is going to be coming out next March.